Something I recently began to question was Maslow's hierarchy of needs. My, uh, my Dutch teacher in high school told me about it and promoted the idea of self-actualization as the final step in the hierarchy, or perhaps you can go one step further, is transcendence, to transcend yourself. But I began to question it because if you look at the actual hierarchy, it starts at the bottom with your physiological needs, such as food, water, shelter, and sleep. And you move one step up to meet your safety needs, your health, your employment, your property, your house. And you move another step up the pyramid to find love and belonging, inclusion into some group that you care about, your community, your tribe, or your religion, for example. And then you go one step further, and that's when you finally re receive self-esteem and respect and recognition. And then the last step would be self-actualization. And if you want to go one step further, it would be your transcendence. But if you actually look at this pyramid, you notice that it must be complete and total bullshit. That is because when you are born, you are actually born in the third step near love and belonging, family, friends and relationships. You are born into a family. So why would you start at the bottom to try to meet your food and water and your shelter needs if you're just a newborn baby? If your parents are going to provide those things for you? Now, I understand you can read the hierarchy that way as in theoretical needs and starts with your physiological needs. You won't live very long without air. You won't live very long without water in that way. I understand Maslow built his hierarchy in that way. But if you look at it as how you actually live a life, you're going to discover you will have to start Maslow's hierarchy, not from the bottom, but from the top. So this is the difference between the theoretical hierarchy and the hierarchy in practice is simply completely opposite. So Maslow's hierarchy of needs has traditionally been taught to school kids like myself around the world. And the purpose of life, the schema claims, is to achieve your self-actualization, whatever the hell that means, your self-improvement perhaps, or your transcendence in the end. But starting the hierarchy from the bottom actually produces impossible psychological hurdles if you were actually trying to travel it from the bottom up. So there's a better way to do it. You start from the top, and that is how I think royalty do it, or even the people above royalty, if there are any. Like, the people who are truly in charge of themselves, they start from the top. So question everything. That's what I taught myself, because I often felt that the academics and at university and the teachers in my, my schools were overvaluing their peer-reviewed systems and theories. Um, high school teachers were often favoring correctness over creativity, right? Don't make mistakes is much more important than to find the truth. Don't find the truth, just don't make mistakes. Now, if you want to find the truth, perhaps capital T truth, then you must assume that everything you know so far is a lie because everything you know was told to you from the TV, your teachers, the academics, the journalists, and who are they to tell you anything at all? They don't know anything because they themselves are slaves of this system. And if you want to break out of that system, you need to stop listening to the propagandists employed by that system. So when I look at Maslow's hierarchy of needs today, I find it peculiar that I, as an individual, am supposed to start by finding food and water and shelter even before I make friends or find a family to live with. If I had to do this on my own, I would start at least at the third step from the bottom. I would start at finding a group of people and then with those people, I would work together with them or I would be employed by them or I would employ them myself. But either way, uh, through some kind of cooperation, I would be better off trying to find food, water and shelter with other people than on my own. Now, with the exception perhaps of being truly dehydrated, I've been in this situation once myself. I was extremely dehydrated on a hike through the mountains in Germany. And uh, I had a water filter with me, 
but there was nowhere to find any water. It hadn't rained in a few days. I couldn't find anything to drink from until uh, exhausted, I found some water, some stream, moving water, small stream going down the, down the mountain slope. Um, in that very instant, uh, two or three people behind me, other hikers, who could have brought me water. If I had asked them for some water, they probably would have given me if they'd had any. Uh, but because I was so dehydrated, I, I effectively became a murderer. I had the mindset of a murderer, like Gollum from Lord of the Rings, my precious water, this water is mine, and I'm not going to let others take this away from me. If you are actually in that position where you are dehydrated and you find some water, let me tell you something. You are not going to share it with anyone until you have first quenched your own thirst. But in terms of finding shelter, if I don't know how to build a house myself, wouldn't I be better off just walking up to some people? Hey guys, can you help me out build a house or a hut or something? You would be probably better off to start with others, to start with that group of belonging. What if people could, you know, be born into a community that looked after them? And this is exactly what happens when we are children. Indeed, human beings don't normally start Maslow's hierarchy, at least in practice, from the bottom step. They start at least at the third step from the top, as a child of their parents and their elders, as a member of some tribe, community, or society. And this community of love and belonging will generally support its infants by providing them with food, water, and shelter which is the fifth step from the top or the bottom step, as well as their safety needs. Now, in fact, that community of belonging that you are born into also provides a child with some basic self-esteem, which is supposed to be the second step from the top. Self-esteem, respect, recognition, you get these things from your parents, uh, lo and behold, if they are any good, right? If your parents are any good, they will have respected you, given you or supported the self-esteem you were born with because I, I don't believe in the blank slate theory. I believe human beings come into this world with a personality and with self-esteem that is built into you. You have these things, you have that survivor instinct, you have those instincts to explore and learn and to become more intelligent and knowledgeable about the world around you. So such self-esteem may also be derived from your tribe's history, the heroes of your family or the uh, the people your, your, your grandparents told you about how, how they acted and behaved. And you may feel connection with those people, your own descendants, your own ancestors, I mean, and that they will uh, offer you some kind of uh, archetypical images that you can relate to and you can understand these people were just like me and I can do what they did. If they fought a bear, I can fight a bear. If they built themselves a hut, then I can build a hut. So this self-esteem does not need to be acquired. And that's my point. You don't have to acquire any self-esteem, respect or recognition. You are supposed to have these things at birth. According to Maslow, however, this is the fourth step from the bottom, meaning you will have to go through three other steps before you even get to have a self-esteem. I understand in theory, theoretically, theoretically, um, uh, self-esteem may be considered unimportant, but in practice, you actually start with self-esteem, the self-esteem that was with you when you were born. You start with it. You don't have to find it later in life. You start with it. And it's very important that you start with it because if you have the self-esteem from the start, then it is much easier for you to learn to build a hut. If you have high self-esteem, you're going to be enjoying how to learn to build your own hut or to how to hunt or to learn to fish. You're going to enjoy doing these things because you're going to feel confident doing all these things. You're not going to second guess. You're not going to doubt yourself. You're not going to put yourself down if you start with self-esteem. So in practice, you would want to start from the top then and not from the bottom. You wouldn't want to go looking for food, water and shelter without any self-esteem. Sure, you can do those things without self-respect or self-esteem, but you're not going to be happy doing those things. You're going to be very depressed if you have to build yourself a house and you don't have any confidence or esteem for yourself. You're going to feel shit. <clears throat> so it is in my opinion that if parents make their child feel some somewhat psychologically visible, 
meaning they treat their child as an actual human being deserving of being seen and heard and treated with care, then this child will simply have all the self-esteem it needs. It's right there in its psyche. And as long as it's not put down or yelled at or destroyed too much, that self-esteem will stick with the child, the esteem it got from its birth. So I tend to believe that children are born with certain psychological qualities such as confidence and self-esteem. And all it needs, all children need, is basic nurture and recognition. So people with low self-esteem, however, the, if you don't have much confidence presently, it may be because you've actually lost this confidence due to negative experiences earlier in your life, such as neglect or abuse, humiliation, ridicule. If you've faced too many of these negative things, you may have lost your self-esteem that you were born with. At least I think so. So at birth or shortly thereafter, all people then should basically have gone through steps two through five from the top of the Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Meaning you, when you are born, you have parents providing you with food, water and shelter. You are literally born into a hut or into a house or a hospital. You have shelter right there at birth. You don't need to acquire these things yourself yet. You have time to learn these things. So what you really need is to be born into a family that cares to teach you what you are going to need for your life to pass on to you what they know meaning the practically useful things. And I don't mean so much the theoretical nonsense, such as what Maslow was preaching. So if you're born into most of what you are going to need in life anyway, then all that's really left for you to do is to participate in this process and supposedly self actualize. In Maslow's view, however, people are born utterly helpless. You've got no shelter, no, no water, no food, and you need to somehow progress up the pyramid uh, to, to meet your needs from the bottom up and do so as a consequence of becoming wealthier and growing older, meaning to say that esteem, self-esteem comes with age. When you're older, you'll have more self-esteem. I think that's not true. I think you can increase your self-esteem, but since you're already born with lots of it, you don't have to. This isn't a mission. This is not the part. The point of life is to acquire more self-esteem, more self-esteem than you need. So I find this notion absurd, uh, Maslow's notion that it implies one needs to be wealthy enough someday to earn one's inclusion into a loving community. Should you really have to earn and, and age enough? to be able to deserve self-esteem. That's bullshit. You deserve self-esteem from day one. No one has to earn money or grow old before they can afford to have friendships and self-esteem and respect and belonging and so on and so forth. You should have all these things from the start of your life. And if you didn't have these things from the start in your life, then you are in trouble and then you will have to fight for these things, right? So this ties into modernity, how modern society treats people. Modern society tells you that when you were born, you were a retard, you couldn't do anything and you had to first find water and food on your own, apparently, uh, at least in the theoretical sense. And this got me thinking that perhaps Maslow has got everything wrong. What if your birth was your self actualization? Meaning to say, you don't need to go through this process of the hierarchy of needs at all. You simply have already been self actualized as who you are today when you were born. So what if it all starts from the top rather than from the bottom? What if you are at birth self actualized as a human being chock full of self esteem and born into a community of belonging that provides you your security needs and your physical needs? In that case, you're all set. And isn't that the isn't that how it really works in practice? In practice, you come into the world, you're supposed to have all these things, you're supposed to have self esteem and love and care, you're supposed to have and deserve all these things at the start. So imagine it this way, then say you were born, 
and that your birth was indeed your self-actualization. Rather than having to grow old to get rich and to earn your self-esteem and to earn your actualization, you simply command the self-esteem that you were born with. Uh, hopefully now you'll be validated by the family you were born into if they're a good family. And I understand some people were not born into a good family. You have more trouble than you have more hurdles and hindrances uh, to, to cross, right? You were, so to speak, put down, set back, but you, that doesn't mean, even if you had a negative experience as a child, it doesn't mean you lost any of that um, self-esteem you were born with. You still have it. You had it at birth and it can't be taken away from you. How can people take your confidence away from you? They can only do that by um, uh, lying to you about you, who you really are and you fall for those lies. It's when you buy into the lies of others and sell you a false self-image. That's when you start getting depressed. And it's actually very easy to cure that depression. You don't need to change your diet. You don't need to, uh, you don't need to take, have therapy. What you need is to start telling those liars to fuck off. So your self-esteem may be suppressed by bad encounters with unfriendly people, but you don't ever have to earn your self-esteem. This is there from the start. It's part of your DNA, if you will, part of your soul, your being. It's there. All you have to do is let it out. So I believe that your self-esteem then flows from your self-actualization as a human being. And your self-actualization was your birth. There's nothing left to do for you now, but to approach life in a very different manner than the way Maslow presented. So as a child, in my view, in the, in the practical view of the hierarchy of needs, you start from the top, you live as a king, right? You will begin your traditional education. This is different from what, what modern education is about. In traditional education, in the simplest form, uh, you are going to rapidly acquire the skills you're going to be able to need. You're going to need to be able to provide your security needs and your physiological needs to yourself. You're going to learn to build a house. You're going to learn to fish, bake bread, repair clothes. Um, you're going to do hunting and gathering, growing crops if you need to, healing wounds, basic hygiene, uh, and many other matters, maybe including getting a job. But in modern society, the modern education system may actually be designed to slow down this traditional education. It will actually prevent you from acquiring the skills you're going to need to live in the world. For example, how do you make money in the modern world? You have to use debt, right? You, you, you borrow money, you invest it, and then hopefully your investment appreciates in value. You pay off your debt once in a while at a certain rate. Uh, and everything else is your profit. So you made money with money you didn't have. That's how you make money in the modern world, but modern education won't tell you that. Modern education tells you to be a professor or a student or to be uh, a mason or a carpenter and to work for a salary. See, modern education tells you to work for a salary. Even the CEOs of many large companies, including say Google, I think it's Pindar Singh or whatever, they, whatever his name is, uh, he's an employee. He's the first employee, he makes most money, maybe they pay him tens of millions of dollars a year, but he's still an employee. He doesn't actually get to use money to make money himself unless he does so uh, on the side as a side hustle, right? But as a CEO, even the best paid CEOs in America and the world are still employees. They, they have not actually learned how to make money with money. By no making money with money you don't have. That's how you make money. <laughs> if you really want to get rich, you make money with that, with the money you don't even have because you borrow it. So modern society, the modern education system may be designed to slow you down. And you may even receive a degree in economics without ever having learned how to fish or how to sell a fish. And that's a problem in modern society. So many people are now being educated in things that don't help them meet their security needs. Whereas a traditional education always will. It is modernity then which thwarts our attempts to find our security needs, to have our needs met. And again, it is modernity which now puts a price tag on our physiological needs. 
if in the past you could stick your cup in a clean stream, unpolluted stream of water, your water was free. If you needed more, you got a bucket and you hauled in a couple of buckets of water. The water was free for cooking and washing. Nowadays, you have to pay for water, right? Or if in the past, right? If, if in the past you needed food, you hunted for it. Or if you needed wood, you chopped your own wood. Nowadays, you have to pay for all these things. You have to go to the supermarket to buy your meat and you have to go to some kind of store to buy uh, uh, logs for your fireplace because uh, oftentimes now there are laws that say you can't go into a forest with, a, with an axe and cut down a tree. This is illegal, right? You can get punished for things that used to be perfectly normal. So Maslow's theoretical hierarchy of needs then appears to apply to modern times, but it certainly wasn't always so. Modernity seems to prevent you from acquiring your needs uh, and our self-actualization then serves as the carrot on the stick that we chase as, we, as though we were donkeys waiting to become human. But we were born human beings. In my view, in a practical view, if you want to live as a king or live as uh, someone unbound by the rules of society, someone who is not a slave, someone who is not an employee, you have to start this hierarchy from the top and realize that your soul, your transcendent soul, is self-actualized by being born as the man or woman that you are today. So my point is we shouldn't have to earn our self-actualization. It's not something we have to work toward and make enough money and, and be experienced enough to acquire it or to reach this, this level in life. Uh, we shouldn't have to jump through all sorts of hoops merely to have self-esteem. Jumping through hoops is not about winning self-esteem. It's a circus act. And if you have to earn your self-actualization, you're a dog. <laughs>